even with that, right people, right time, the process was scary smooth. Oh gosh, how do I put it? The neighborhood that we live in is terrible. Let's start there. What's up friends? Surprise, surprise, it's me in real time. <laughs> I know I told you all that the next few videos were gonna be recaps of the, all the footage I've been taking over the last few months. Um, January is up, if you're interested, go watch that. Uh, but I had to jump on today for a little emergency video. I hinted at this on my Facebook and Instagram and enough people replied and were like, sis, we need the tea. So I'm here to provide the tea in hopes that I save one of your uh, lives regarding home buying, okay? I have learned so much um, about what I did wrong with buying my first home. If this comes as a shock to you, I sort of hinted in a couple of videos ago, I think, about how being a homeowner, I, I kind of have some regrets. Um, and this has been literally stacking up, y'all, since I would say about two weeks after I moved into this house, if that. Um, the regrets have just been piling for a year and a half now. Um, so, today's, um, you know, kind of straw that broke the camel's back, I guess you can say, is that there's been a lot of rain in Ohio, and, um, it's a lot of, like, rain in a very short amount of time, and so a lot of people's things are flooding. Um, what we discovered is that, um, our yard is actually basically, like, a sinkhole <laughs> and um yeah so it is filling with water um it's full of water actually right now it looks a little bit like a pond back there not even a little bit it's a lot of it it goes all the way into the neighbor's um backyard as well so it's just like one big large pond between two fences it's great it's lovely um that's all sarcasm and then because of all of that water um we, of course, I hesitated to go downstairs, but went downstairs and there's water down there as well. Now I will say because our basement and our home in general is so old, the basement floor is uneven because um, it's so crappy, which actually worked in our favor a little bit, I would say, in that all the water kind of went to one back corner um, and stayed away from where most of our, like, where some damage could have been done, like where our food storage and like all that stuff is. Um, so it wasn't there and the bins that were over there were plastic. So unless there's cracks in the bins, which I don't think there are, then we're good to go there. Um, however, there was some stuff that did get wet. Our Christmas tree box is in a cardboard box and so I had to move that because that got wet. Um, and overall it just smells terrible down there as you can um, imagine. So. It was just kind of the thing that put me over and was just like, you know what? Um, actually, well, the aspect of that that put me over is I looked and there was a hole in our foundation that literally was pouring water like a daggone hose. I mean, I kid you not. It was like a faucet was left on, but it was in the wall. Um, and I was just like, you know what? That's annoying because I know that was there before. Um, I mean, it's quite possible that it could have been formed after that, but I have a pretty solid theory that it was there when I bought the home. Um, so I will add the disclaimer that I need to go back and read through my um, inspection and see if it's in there officially because it could be. Um, but in the like kind of summary meeting that I had with the inspector after his inspection, there was no mention of a hole in the foundation to that degree that would flood the basement. So um, yeah, so anyways, what I'm here to do today is to kind of walk you all through all the things that I did wrong uh, with buying my first home and how it sucks that I really regret this purchase. It's such a huge purchase. And I hate to have regrets, but it is what it is. At this point, I'm accepting that like, hey, as much as I wanna have made all the right decisions um, throughout life, that's not how life works. Even though I, in a lot of other areas of my life, work really hard to make good decisions. There are some areas of my life where I have not made good decisions, and this is one of them. Um, and with such a large purchase, again, I'm just, I'm trying to save y'all. So let's get into it. Y'all know I have a list. I really just did some scratch notes real quick to try to get this up for you guys. Um, by the way, if it's your first time on my channel, hi, my name is Gaby, Gabrielle. 
either one um and i am yeah happy to bring this information to you hopefully you learned something from me about what not to do so let's talk about what i got wrong um last disclaimer before i get started if you're looking for a what to do when you are looking for home uh buying or starting an experience go find somebody else okay because i need to find that person actually when you go find that person send the link to me okay because i am still daily learning what actually I should have done. That's not this video. This video I'm gonna be telling you all the things that I did wrong so that you can learn from my mistakes and essentially maybe do the opposite is the to-dos. But this is not a what you should do to um, be a good home buyer because you don't want that info from me. Not at this stage, okay? Not till I do a little more research. So the first one I have on here is that I didn't do enough background research <laughs> on the home buying process and what to look for in the home buying process, what to expect about like what it will be like, um, expected timelines, um, watching others' testimonials on YouTube like you're doing um, about mine. <laughs> I didn't do enough of that. Um, which probably sounds crazy for those of you who know I have a PhD. <laughs> That sounds bonkers. And that leads me to another disclaimer, which is some of the things that I share with you all, like what I just said, are going to sound like dumb. They're gonna sound like, duh. Um, and if it's a duh for you, congratulations. Um, very happy for you. Love that you are um, smart um, in that way. But I will be honest, um, I don't want the comment section to sh turn into a shame party. I'm really not interested in the shame part of it. I've already gone through that wave like 20 times with my own self about just like girl you know better sort of stuff. Like some of this was common sense. Like you were overthinking it to the point where you didn't ask the right questions or do the right research. Um, so yeah, again, if some of these are like duh and they sound dumb to you, um, don't be mean. <laughs> um, and again, congratulations that you are smarter than me in this area, but I'm just keeping it 100 um, in the hopes of, again, saving one of you all. So any shame in the comments or that kind of conversation will just get removed because I'm not dealing with that. Okay, so again, didn't do enough background research. I really didn't know what to expect about the home buying process. Um, so for context, if you want to know about like how the experience went and all of that, and if you want to laugh at me about how the things that I said in that video did not age well, please feel free to check out this link. I'll put it somewhere um, and also in the description box about the video I did about the home buying process and just how it went for like the full context. For a quick context, if you're just clicking on this video, um, at the time I was living with one of my friends um and saving up money for a down payment i did that because my lease was up um in the month of september i had a major major devastating life change a few months before that that left me basically paralyzed about trying to figure out my next steps and so my friend took me in and was like hey i'll give you some time to figure it out I knew that I didn't want to sign another lease because the whole trend of Columbus at that time and kind of still is to be honest because of inflation is just ridiculous rent rates that although I could pay them it just felt dumb to continue to pay for rent and give someone else thousands and thousands of dollars every year um, when I could own a home and basically pay myself if you will or yeah. Okay, pause here because I clearly have more to say. <laughs> and I'll probably do this throughout because there are some things I left out. But I believe the hype, y'all, of like, I know you've seen or heard people saying like, oh, if you can afford like $2,000 in rent every month, you can also afford um, to just buy your own house. Like, why would you pay that much in rent every month if you can just buy your own house? Like, that's more than what a house costs. And I believe that hype. I believed that story for quite some time. But let me tell you right now, the two are not equivalent, okay? They're not. On one hand, yes, I see what people are saying, okay? Buy a house because you can have more, allegedly, more space, more whatever, for less money, and the, the money's going back to you. It's not just, you know, getting blown apart and sent to somebody else. Okay, but there are benefits to apartment living, which is incorporated in the cost of rent every month. And yeah, so I just had to say that here because uh, that's one of the things that I believed about why 
I should go ahead and buy a house versus renting and I don't feel that same way today. Um, it just seemed like, okay, this is a big girl financial decision to just start having more ownership of my money. I really feel like uh, buying a house is the next step. Like I just really had that pressure on myself that like this is the next step. Uh, I had some advice. Um, I'll say that was kind of affirming that, you know, buying uh, or renting, um, again, was just not the best move, especially in this economy. You want to be able to um, own a home, blah, blah, blah. So uh, that's the trend that I was on and that was the plan that I was on. Yeah, that's the context for my home buying experience. So some people, you're flexible, you've got years, you're doing all of this planning for years in advance, you're understanding the process, you're doing a whole lot of prep work in the mindset of like, oh, I'm going to buy a house, let me get this prep work in order. Um, that just wasn't my situation. I had done a little bit of discussion and stuff like the year prior. Um, I think it was, yeah, I think the year prior, then I had a couple conversations here and there throughout. I had watched a couple of YouTube videos of just people like talking through on buying a house, but didn't do like research on like all the components of it. I knew nothing. Um, I wasn't super forthcoming that I knew absolutely nothing, but I knew nothing. So I was basically, yeah, just at the mercy of the home buying process, which is a dangerous position to be in. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to be in that position, but that's the position that I was in and I highly regret that. Along the same vein, the next thing I want to mention is that buying this home in retrospect was a rather emotional decision. So as I said, I had a huge um, life situation that literally blew my world apart. Uh, five, let me do the math, five or six, yeah, about five months before I bought the house. Um, and like I said, I was living with my friend, which was a result of that situation. Um, and it was just, yeah, I just, I was not in a good headspace. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Um, you know, emotional purchases, some people it's going out and buying clothes. Some people it's going out and buying a whole bunch of food. Um, apparently for me, it was go out and buy a house <laughs> and would not recommend do not buy a house when you are not in a good emotional and just in general good headspace i'm back again do not be afraid to lean on your community for this um i most certainly should have talked this over like any major purchase during an emotional season should have talked this over with my counselor i should have talked this over and like trusted the advice um of like my family and my brother who had been in real estate and just be like, you know, people who know you and know your heart and know what you're dealing with, to be like, yeah, girl, you are in sound mind to make a purchase as big as a home or somebody who's going to keep it 100% real with you and be like, girl, now is this a reactionary purchase? <laughs> Like, are, are you ready for this? Are you mentally, like, aware of what's going on? And, like, have that conversation with me. You know, like, that's the kind of person that you want on your side when you're buying a home. You feel what I'm saying? I just, I was so stuck on just needing this win, which I'll talk about in just a minute, that I think I was just tuning people out slash not really having the conversations like that because I didn't want their honest answer which probably would have been girl sat down somewhere and quit trying to buy a house <laughs> that ain't what you want okay okay because guess what when you get in a better headspace and you get all healed up you still got that mortgage on your name amen okay so i was just i will i had to be honest with that later on of just like i was in an emotional space i felt like i was taking up um space at my friend's place because i mean she of course was not like pushing me out, forcing me out, nothing like that. It literally, they were actually sad that I was leaving as soon as I was, um, because originally I thought I would be there about six months and I ended up only being there three months. Um, but again, she has two kids. They were letting me stay in the kids' playroom. I felt bad about it. It just was like my grown self in these people's space. It just didn't feel, um, you know, like I, I just, I was motivated to get out of their space. I mentioned that in the other video as well. But all of this is emotional. All, you know what I'm saying? There's feelings attached to all of this. Um, 
also I'm laughing in the back of my head thinking if you're watching this and wondering what all of that tea is <laughs> just go check out my channel I'm very transparent and vulnerable here with you all so scroll back a few videos you'll figure it out um but yeah so it was just it was a time and I just again would strongly recommend to everyone if this is an emotional decision if this has anything to do with you feeling like I just need a win like I really felt like at that time I just needed a win I am an achiever like I had just got off the wave of nine years of college I had just finished my PhD the year before and I think I just needed a win after like a setback I think I just wanted to have an achievement to say I was uh, 20 how old was I, I was 27 nope I was 20 28 at the time I was 28 and I wanted to say like I, I was 28 and bought my first home like all of that so all of those were like various emotional motivating factors for me like jumping the gun on buying this home and hindsight is 2020 is all I can say about that and the next one um, that I feel like kind of lines up is I didn't ask enough questions there are so many questions that I should have asked <laughs> of my realtor of the lending company there's just of the neighborhood of even my community even of the uh sellers which i don't even know if you're allowed to talk to the sellers in the process ignorance um but even if it was like the seller's realtor like i just i should have done more talking i should have done more asking of questions um the neighborhood that we live in is uh terribly oh gosh how do i put it the neighborhood that we live in is terrible. Let's start there. I am not from Columbus. I'm from Akron, Ohio, which is about two hours north of Columbus. Grew up there my entire life. Obviously, I've lived in Columbus since 20... Oh gosh, when did I move? 2017. Um, but I lived on the same side of town. I went where I was going. That was it. I wasn't exploring Columbus. I wasn't doing research on Columbus. And I actually lived in Virginia for a full year before moving back uh, to Columbus in 2021. So I basically like am a newbie in Columbus. I don't know, like in Akron, if somebody says I'm buying a house in such and such area I would know immediately how to feel about that what goes on there all of that you know what I'm saying because I know those places but Columbus I don't have that privilege and so I should have asked people from Columbus like straight up this is the address this is the neighborhood how do you feel about this area somebody who grew up here and has stories about this neighborhood is who I should have been asking I didn't do that why I didn't do that I don't know or I asked but I didn't ask enough. I didn't ask for the details. And so I uh, just ignored several red flags about this entire neighborhood. I honestly, if you want the complete honest truth, when people wanna come over, other than the fact that I love the inside of my house because of how I style it, when people wanna come over, when people wanna pick me up, when people wanna come by, I'd be embarrassed. I am not even gonna hold y'all. This neighborhood is it's awful and the aspects about like not asking enough questions i bought the home in winter so nobody was outside like literally no one was outside now visually the neighborhood doesn't look that great but columbus has this trend of flipping older neighborhoods some of it yes is very much gentrification and that sucks okay i'm gonna just point that out but the reality is there are a lot of older neighborhoods that like homes are getting bought flipped etc and then the neighborhood sort of changes so i was made to believe that this area was kind of on that same wavelength um so that the visual aspects of what i was seeing would not look like that for much longer so in my mind okay i can explain the visual way but the activity of the neighborhood y'all I mean, I moved in end of November. Actually, I moved in early, first week of December, 2022. And so, again, no one was outside. It's freezing cold in Ohio most times. So nobody was outside. So I'm living my best little life. Y'all, when that weather broke, <laughs> the stories that I have for you of what I have seen in this neighborhood, and let's be clear, I did not grow up in the suburbs in Akron. I didn't grow up in the worst neighborhood, but it certainly wasn't the best neighborhood. I've seen and heard some things in the neighborhood that I grew up in. Nothing like what I see and hear living in this neighborhood. It is wild. Last summer, my husband and I's lullaby at night was gunshots. And I'm not talking about sound, oh, was that a gunshot? No. 
sounded like they was out there kicking off rifles is what it sounded like many a gunshot <laughs> i was like is this real life like just dumb like just dumb stuff y'all now i will say our, we've never been in danger we've never had a package stolen off our porch we've had packages left out there by accident overnight and things like that nothing has been stolen or anything like that no one has tried anything at us you know like walking in and out of our home it's not that but it's just the overall essence of the neighborhood is so it's so bad back again i don't think i realized how much value i put on having a neighborly neighborhood like I don't know if they'll still exist. I'm sure they do somewhere. But like, you know, when you move in and your neighbors like bring you a pie, is that on TV or is that real? You know what I'm saying? Like people speaking, people being neighborly to your property and expecting the same from you. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But that is not the neighborhood we live in if you can't put that together. <laughs> it's so bad. And I was mortified i will say the moment the weather broke and the activities that we heard witness <sighs> y'all i felt so duped i was just the agony of it all i'll move on um but yeah i just didn't ask enough questions about the neighborhood about the area you know looking for some news articles i would have found plenty <laughs> i mean you know i just should ask more questions um the basement the basement of this house so the house in general is really old it was like i think in the 1920s it was built 1920s that sounds right if i remember correctly so it's it's an older home now they claimed on the advertisement the sellers claimed that they took the house down to the bare to the bones and flipped it uh, looking at the basement alone it's worse than the basement that i grew up with which is just an older home older basement if y'all know what that is it's like it's not a place you go to hang out you know you go do your laundry and come back up out the basement one of those this one is that but times 50 don't know what kind of explaining way I did of that red flag. Ooh, got to jump in here, got to jump in here on that one. I should have said explicitly to y'all, believe the red flags. I'm talking about believe every red flag. Do not try to explain away a single red flag. If your spirit is unsettled, if you see something and you think, hmm, that don't look right, it don't. Don't let nobody tell you. Don't let nobody say, oh, you can fix that later on when you get in the house oh that's not a big deal I, I, mm -mm. every single red flag that i had in my gut that i didn't want to acknowledge or that i explained away were all true bright bright red flags i was gonna say maroon but that's not bright enough believe every single red flag that you see and i mean it but i did um and yeah when you have a basement like that, you just have to ask more questions because it doesn't look like that for no reason. So you start asking questions like about flooding. Mm-hmm. About the foundation. Is the house finna sink in? About the ceiling above your head and why it looks the way that it looks. Um, yeah, there's just so many questions that you ask with a basement that looks like mine, but apparently those questions were nowhere to be found in my brain. Um, and then biggest red flag and here's where I think again some of y'all are gonna want to judge me and I've already told you how I feel about that so don't do that also my husband's home so he's probably gonna interrupt me you've got to go off my friend because you are causing this guy all right I'm back y'all but the light is leaving me so let me go quickly um so what was I saying about permit so um my house I think I said this already, it was claimed to be a took it down to the bones um, and completely flipped an old house. Um, psych, come to find out, which I faintly remembered this today, and I'm like, I think that happened. Can't remember, but I pretty, I'm pretty sure I was told by the inspector that he wasn't able to find the permits for the contracting, like the different flips and things that they did in the house, the new electrical, the new whatever. Um, he couldn't find the permits. Um, why was that not a red flag, baby? Why was that not a red flag that he couldn't locate the permits for the construction that went on in his house? 
which means that then DIYers, because they did a bit to be, you know, DIYers, um, the DIYers DIY'd on their own with no code checks. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know what, how do you, how do you get away with flipping home with no permits? I don't know, but why that wasn't more of a red flag? I'm embarrassed. I'm a, I'm embarrassed to admit that to y'all that I heard that and didn't immediately stop the sale. God help us all. So yeah, did ask enough questions. I also didn't look hard enough. Y'all, in the same vein of this DIY shenanigans, which if you're a DIY flipper, if you're a part of that new age, you know, make money by buying houses and flipping them, please flip them correctly. Please do not be the bane of somebody's existence when they move into a house that you flipped and the house is literally trash. The house, beautiful to the eye. When people come over, oh my gosh, I love your house. When I came in, I was floored. They had the thing staged to a T. The house looked exquisite. It looked like something out of my old home meets modern home dreams. If I would have took, I didn't even need a magnifying glass. I was going to say a magnifying glass. If I would have just sat and stared at a corner long enough, I would have seen so much. For example, our bathroom upstairs, which is our only full bathroom, y'all, the sink, vanity, mirror, and the light fixture above it are not center. And I know that sounds like, huh? No. If I take a picture right now, they're all off center. Like none of them are, are center. So it's like, how did y'all miss that? There are pieces of tile in our, in our bathroom that stick out over the edge like this. Like they had extra tile in there and said, eh, we won't cut that. There are gaps of like, it was clear they cut a tile and like a piece broke. They just filled it with plaster. Um, the shower head is off center from the thing that you use to turn on the shower. Um, what else? There's so much. Um, downstairs, the other uh, week in the kitchen, I had gotten on the floor for some reason and looked across under the sink. The tile that they have all across the floor goes up as well to meet the bottom of the cabinet, except where the sink is. It literally looks like they only had this much tile left and they were like, eh, just put it there. They won't come down here and see that literally half the tile is missing and there's just an open gap just hanging out under the cabinet. Um, what's another one? Oh, the laundry door. Uh, they used the little baby screws and the hinge that closes the door instead of the long screws that you're supposed to use, I guess, to make sure that the door as you move it over time it doesn't just pop the screws out so we have um you know had to deal with those issues of the hinges basically popping off of that door every couple months um, which is now becoming more frequent so um i could go on there's so much oh the flooring um the actually the floors themselves are very uh unstable uh, the inspector kind of pointed out some of the aspects of it. The floor is way more unstable than I ever imagined. If we jump too hard, drop anything too hard, anything, it literally feels like we are going to go through the floor. Um, what else? Where do you... Oh, because the floor is unstable, the laminate flooring that they put on that looked so perfect when I first came in to look at it, now over time from people walking and us doing things on the floor, all of the laminate uh, tiles, not tiles, but what are those called? I don't know, the planks. They all have gaps, not all. A lot of them have gaps between them from the floor moving. So now there's all these spaces in between our laminate flooring. Shall I go on? <laughs> I mean, paint job just being caked on. Um, what else? Oh, they took the, the backsplash out to meet the counter, but it looks like they didn't either measure correctly or whatever for the top shelves. So the tile comes out to here, the counter comes out to here, the top shelving stops here. So there's just this random, like, what was I looking at, y'all? Sincerely, what was I looking at? So that's another thing I did wrong. I just wasn't looking hard enough. And I know, again, this all sounds super dumb, but 
I guess this is my warning is that amid the whole home buying process, you can really get swept up in your feelings, your excitement, your, oh my gosh, this is happening. Oh my gosh, I like this house. You can really get swept up in that if you're not careful. Um, you know, and if you have a realtor that is really just there to like make whatever happen that you want to happen, like no one's going to stop you. No one's going to say, hey, look at that. That doesn't look right. They're just going to be like, all right, let's do it. And so... You got to like be, you got to look harder. Like literally I'm suggesting that you get down on your hands and knees when you're viewing the house and just look at the details. Don't look at the overall, oh, this looks cute. Okay, we got a couple more. I didn't get enough second opinions, which I kind of hinted at that already, but I didn't even realize, I guess with inspection, that you can get a second opinion on the inspection. I didn't realize it. I went with the inspector that my realtor suggested to me um, and I just figured, okay, great. Uh, yeah, he did the inspection. It was seemingly thorough. He had a full PDF printout and all this stuff. He went through it with me of the top highlights. So I assumed like, oh, this is great. Why would I need to go to somebody else for a second opinion? This also leads into another aspect of my personality that's not super great, which is I, I'm a little too confident sometimes in human beings. Um, I think the best of everyone nine times out of ten. And so a lot of times, especially as a kid and as a teenager, I would get duped by folks. Um, I'm not super gullible per se. I just be believing the best. So I wasn't leading with, oh, he could be trying to scam me. And I'm not saying that the inspector was trying to scam me. But I just was leading with, oh, He's a good guy, he seems honest, he seems thorough. So I didn't ask more questions. And it's like, even if you trust the people that you're working with, it's still good to ask questions. It's still good to get a second opinion. What do you think about this? Did you see any other issues? Um, you know, I just, I, yeah, I should have done, I should have gotten a lot more second opinions on so much um this one's a little more common but i still think people don't like put enough weight on it i've seen a joke on social media when you uh people are like um i d had just enough money for the down payment and they're like in this gorgeous empty house and they're just staring at the wall like well i only had enough for the down payment and it's like that's all he ha ha and i thought like oh that's he ha ha in your mind you're thinking furniture oh i'll just i'll have time to get furniture. No. No, no, no. That is not why you should have way more money in your account than the closing cost. Having just the down payment and the closing cost is the is the bare minimum. That's below the minimum. The minimum is to make sure you have thousands, and I do mean thousands, set aside for any sort of upgrades, emergency things that happen, etc. Obviously, you're not going to always be prepared for everything, but you need to have a fallback like immediately available and not something that you have to finance and can pay off over time or something that like, oh, I'll be able to afford that eventually. No, you need to have them thousands waiting for you because like certain things like being able to fence in the property, like our property severely needs a fence. It was previously foreclosed before the people bought it and like flipped it. And so p the neighborhood treats my property at times like it is still foreclosed. People are, I think, used to being able to walk through the property because it's on the corner lot. It's a very huge yard and people be, I guess, lazy and don't want to walk around. So they walk through our yard. They leave their dog poop in our yard. They leave their trash in our yard. Um, we're also like off an alleyway, so trash from the dumpsters, I guess, or from the city, I don't know, just finds its way into our yard with any windstorm, any anything. Something that we really needed is a fence because clearly I need to let the neighborhood know people live here now, even though I know y'all see us and I know that y'all see that this house has been bought, but sometimes people need help understanding boundaries and so a fence would be great when i found out the cost of fencing not only that but with the amount of yard that we have me when i bought this was like oh we'll get a fence honestly i didn't have the foresight to know that people were not going to be honoring and respecting the property okay i'll take that l but still like moving with just enough money to 
make the sale it's just it's not smart y'all like anything can happen i've heard of people having to replace their whole hvac when they move in water heaters plumbing like you do not want to be moving on hopes dreams and just enough money for the down payment and clothing costs it's just me personally i will never do that again and i would just never recommend that anyone else does if you think oh i can get to it over time there are certain things that yes can be on a, like when i get their wish list certain things that could really be essential and you move thinking you gonna eventually get there to the point of purchasing those things site you'll be stuck like we are <laughs> i just want to add in here in case you think this is a matter of just like how much money you make or salary or something like that i just want to add that my husband and i are actually doing very well for ourselves at this age um i would say very well but something you don't think about when you're buying a house is like life be life in you know <laughs> like house expenses are not the only expenses that you're going to have you're also going to want to have a general savings account that is untouched money so it's really like you want money on top of money you understand what i'm saying so it's not that like we haven't been making the money to do the things that we want to do it's just like when you look around the house and there's several big ticket items like all at once it's like okay unless you're a millionaire or you just got racks and racks and racks like you don't have the money to do fencing, landscaping, complete basement, like refinish, um, all of that. Like you don't have all of that in one sitting to do. So that's the point I'm making here. Not that we're just out here buying a home outside of our range because we didn't. This house is very affordable in that sense. It's just all the other things that come with being a homeowner and also just being an adult. And then the other thing I want to mention is that I personally believe that I paid way more than this house costs. I mean like way more now I will say I got the house appraised um actually I think that was like a mandatory part of the process I was actually appraised for higher than I, I bought it for so technically I had equity um in the home already we're starting off with equity it was not a whole lot more than what I paid but it was more than what I paid but that was without a substantial like obvious you know like thorough inspection I personally believe if they had done a thorough inspection of the house, it would not have been appraised when we were appraised for it. Whatever. That, that, that's somebody else's job. But I will say that I just, I didn't really negotiate. And I remember being so confused, which is so funny now, about all the people who say that like they get in bidding wars for houses and how long it's taken some of my friends to be able to purchase a home. I remember being like, wow, so why was my process so smooth? It's because I came in above at, well, not above asking price. It was not above asking price. But I think I came in high. I just remember coming in high. Actually, no, I think it was above asking price. And I think we offered as well, like, that I would increase up to a certain amount if it was, like, in a bidding war. But, like, sis, if you had looked a little harder, you would realize there's no, the reason they went with my offer, which I thought was, like, I'm not saying it wasn't a blessing. I'm just saying, I really believe they went with my offer because the sellers were probably shook that somebody offered that for this house that they know is not, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I think they automatically accepted my offer off some like, oh, we ain't finna get nothing like this. If anybody looks at our house any harder, they're not gonna give us this. So let's go ahead and accept her offer is what it's giving. So yeah, I wasn't in no bidding war. Yeah, the process seemed very smooth. Like, yeah, I'm eating the words. Like, oh wow, this process was so rapid fire and I just can't believe. Like, now I know why. Because I was out here this lighting is atrocious, so y'all know I love you because I literally agreed to record this today just so that y'all could have the tea. Um, but yeah, I never should have paid what I paid for this house, and I would never do it again for a house like this. Matter of fact, in the future, I have no intentions of buying a house this old ever again. Won't do it. Honestly, I probably won't buy a home if it wasn't built in the 2000s. Probably won't. Um, and even from there, I probably will still have some pretty strict requirements because, yeah. I guess that's another thing is I really didn't have, I didn't come in with a wish list. Which fits in very well with like the emotional nature of where I was at the time and we've already talked about that. But I didn't come in with a wish list. Like I didn't come in with this is what I want and I'm checking the house against the things that I want. 
you know like I had a general sense of what I was hoping to see in a house but it wasn't grounded and so when I come in a house like this and it was staged perfectly and it looked like or felt good you know felt like something that felt like me I went off of that instead of having a literal checklist and saying okay it doesn't have this what am I going to do about that you know like can I live with that can I not I didn't have that and that was dumb like honestly if you're going to go in and spend this kind of money on something y'all let it be something that you like actually want and that reflects things that mean something to you like don't come in without a wish list don't do that like obviously this is not my forever home so I didn't feel like I was coming in and it needed to have absolutely everything you know it was supposed to be a starter home and you know it has started me I will say that it has started my marriage it has started our family but to spend what I spent when I bought this and to see all that we're dealing with, there is no reason at all that I should have come in here without a checklist. Even for the neighborhood, like things that I want out of the neighborhood. Like I love taking neighborhood walks. I can't do that here. Like I literally can't. That's not even an option for me here in this neighborhood. I have to drive somewhere to a park to be able to walk. Like, why didn't I consider the fact that I used to walk outside of my apartment and literally just walk the neighborhood. I loved it. People would be out walking their dogs. Like, that kind of stuff honestly ties into your mental health. And for me to ignore that and not pay attention to something like that that actually does mean so much to me. Played yourself. Like, you played yourself. So there's probably more I could add to this list. Um, I'm sure if enough of it comes to me, I will do a part two. I'm sure I will continue to discover things, unfortunately, over time. And it'll come to a part two list. Um, the last disclaimer I will leave you with, and the last thing I just want to say is, I don't want anyone to take this video as like me just straight up complaining or completely like going back on the things that i said about truly believing that the lord had made a way for me to purchase this house when i did i still believe this airplane is doing the most i don't want you to take all of this as me saying i got it wrong in the sense of like me giving glory to god and saying all of the things that happened for me to be able to get this house were you know not god and all of that like i'm not saying even that i do believe that the lord is very intentional i think there was something to be learned about this experience for me i do still believe that the way was made for me to be here and that was not an accident now there were accidents involved for sure um and there are things that i learned from and things that i wish wouldn't have happened but that did happen but like at the end of the day i am so confident of one thing and if you have been here on this channel you have seen it my life is such a testimony to god coming through over and over and over again he has done so many miracles in my life he has made ways when there were literally no ways i remember at times in college one in particular in undergrad where i literally was maxed out on what i could take out on student loans for that semester and i still had money due to the college and was freaking out having a whole moment thinking oh my gosh what am i going to do about this kid you not out of nowhere a scholarship that i was on sent me a gpa because of my gpa sent me a random scholarship for the exact amount for the exact amount like a week later or some days later like I could tell y'all a million stories like that like how I almost thought I was gonna have to drop out of my PhD program because I didn't get a grad assistantship after being told I was gonna get this grad assistantship and a completely other one out the blue coming people working behind the scenes having conversations bringing my name up in rooms that I was not in for God to make a way and I end up with this whole other graduate assistantship a better one that has literally led to the things that I'm currently doing now in my career like Please don't play my God. Like, please, please don't play my God, okay? So I have no less faith in God. I do not think this is anything but a matter of life and how life be working out sometimes. And again, lessons learned, okay? So I am, even though I have had moments of beating myself up, I am choosing grace, giving myself grace. I am learning. I am going back and reading documents. I'm figuring the things out. 
as I learn, I will share so that others can learn and that we can all get to hopefully a better position um, with home ownership. What is our plan currently? I don't know. I am figuring that out as the minutes roll by. Literally, me and my husband all are having conversations about what we think, what our next moves will be, etc. Like, it's gonna work out. I know the Lord is going to work it out. So I am not fearful. Um, it sucks and it sucks to be kind of stuck here until we figure that out but I know it's gonna be okay so that's all I'm gonna share in this video because it's already long enough and I think that's everything on my mind like I said if I think of more I will do a part two drop your questions in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you guys okay my battery is now dying so I'm gonna hurry up get off of here edit this so I can get up for you guys and I'll see you in the next video bye